Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, finishing up the second book of the Shepherd of Hermes called His Commands. We are looking at Command 12 or the second part of Command 12. It's a summary. It says that the commands of God are not impossible and that the devil is not to be feared by them that believe. All right, we already covered that part about the twofold desire. You can check that out over in our playlist that we have for all of the commands that we've covered so far we've been doing these classes for about a year now but we want to go ahead and finish up with this one um, I suggest you go ahead and look at the other classes when you get around to it uh, they're a little bit rough we're going to end up recording them over again but they're very important if you can get through some of my uh, mistakes of lack and lack of editing and like I said we put them up a year ago when our modest channel has you know has improved a little bit since then so they're all a little rough but go ahead and check those out until we can get the new ones posted up um, hopefully we'll be in some type of Bible study environment when we do these commands again that way we can have some feedback from some people but we're going to go ahead and finish up with these we're going to have to jump all the way down here to verse 12 all right verse 12 says and when he had fulfilled these 12 commands he said unto me, Thou hast now these commands, walk in them, and exhort those that hear them to repent, and that they keep their repentance pure all the remaining days of their life. All right, guys. So what does it tell me to do here? It tells me to exhort you guys and tell you guys to repent. These are 12 commands talking about anger. I wish I had a review them all. Talking about anger, talking about doubtfulness, talking about sadness, talking about uh, uh, evil desires, talking about the fear of one father. There, there's 12 commands here and you know we have to walk in these commands like we said in the last chapter these were supposed to have been part of our doctrine anyway they were supposed to have been the shepherd of hermits was supposed to have been a uh, part of our canonical books um that's probably why we got 66 of them, you know, letting us know that those, that those books are incomplete. We should have had these, this book of the Shepherd of Hermits in there, which we would have learned these commands, and these commands would have been part of our life. But turns out the church decided that they didn't want them in there, you know, probably because it identifies them as false prophets or whatever for some of their practices and some of the doctrines that they teach. And so you can understand why they took them out. But, hey, it's important for us to put them back in. We're not the Catholic Church. We are the real church. We are the ones who are expected to inherit the earth to go on to the kingdom of heaven so we can't really listen to those guys we know that those guys who took this book out those groups they're going to go into the sea of apostasy so we can't really worry about what they think all right so we're going to go on let's look at verse 13 and fulfill diligently this ministry which i commit to thee and thou shalt receive great advantage by it and find favor with all such as shall repent and believe thy words for i am with thee and will force them to believe all right now this is how Her hermes academy got started this is why we call it hermes academy because of the commands that's in this book now this is just a taste of it but what this this book after it gives you the commands is telling you to go out and minister and teach no other book in the bible tells you to go out and teach what you've learned they tell us you know moses tells us how to live um uh, uh, the Sermon on the Mount to tell us how to live, but they don't never say, okay, take this information and go back and teach others the way Hermes does. It, you know, it is even called, it said, see right there in verse 13, it says, and fulfill diligently this mission. It's because he put us on this mission to teach. I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to fulfill what he said to do here by teaching you guys here, here these mandates and these commands. That's how Hermes Academy got started. That's what we're doing. That's the purpose of Hermes Academy. Now, we teach a lot of other books. Me wrong. We get distracted a lot. We end up over in the Third Testament, back in the Old Testament, and the New Testament, the Apocrypha. Just did a class on Enoch and the Big Bang Theory. So we get distracted a lot. But the purpose of Hermes Academy is to teach you guys the commands and the similitudes, which we, we give uh, classes on the similitudes as well. Those are very interesting as well. And you can find a um, playlist on those on our channel. But let me get on. Let me mash the gas a little bit. And I said unto him, Sir, these commands are great and excellent and able to cheer the heart of that man that shall be able to keep them. But, sir, I cannot tell whether they can be observed by any man. All right. Now, Herman's about to get in trouble here because he's saying, hey, there's some good ideas you got there. But I don't know if nobody's going to be able to do that stuff you're talking about. How are we just supposed to be cheerful? How are we supposed to just stop being doubtful? How are we supposed to just stop being angry? How in the world is the average man just going to do this stuff? And, you know, you know, 
you're going to get chastised a little bit too. Let's look at verse 15. He, he answered, talking about the angel of repentance. That's who, that's who Hermes is talking to. That's who's teaching Hermes these virtues and these commands and these similitudes is the angel of repentance. And he answered, thou shalt easily keep these commands and they shall not be hard. Howbeit, if thou shalt suffer it once to enter into thine heart that they cannot be kept by anyone, thou shalt not fulfill them. All right. Now. See right there, he said once. If you even entertain the idea once that it's too hard to do, you won't be able to do it. So we got to be careful. This is one of those those wicked thoughts that we have in our head is that, you know, we can't be happy, that we can't be cheerful, that we, you know, that we have to be angry or whatever. That if we entertain those thoughts, it's going to corrupt us. And we got to we got to watch out for that. Um, look at verse 16. But now I say unto thee, if thou shalt not observe these commands and shalt neglect them. Thou shalt not be saved, nor thy children, nor thy house, because thou hast judged that these commands cannot be kept by man. Now you have to understand what, what, who, who the, the angel of repentance is talking to. He, of course, he's talking to Hermes um, because he expects Hermes to come back and write, and write this book that we're now reading. But he, he told Hermes in an earlier verse that because he is the uh, man of the house, because he's the head of the house, that he, he is the one who really has to learn all of these commands and, and teach all of these commands to his children and make sure that his children are following and doing what he, what he says. He told him in an earlier part, there's no need for me to afflict your kids. Um, if you're not going to be afflicted, it's not going to help them. So, you know, Hermes has gone through all of the pain and stuff. But look what he's telling Hermes. He said, hey, Hermes, if you don't do these, then your family is going to die. <laughs> Well, let me read exactly what it says. They don't want to add no words. Thou shalt not be saved. Yeah. And what what saved me, I, I could get off on a tangent on what saved me. People say I'm saved all the time. And I, I want to say, well, saved from what? What are you saved from? How are you saved from something, a, a futuristic event? This event is supposed to happen in the future. How do you know that you are saved from it already? You know, but we'll get off into that in another class. But he's telling him if you neglect these commands, if you don't do these mandates, uh, you won't be saved. Your children won't be saved. Your whole house won't be saved. That's talking about sojourners. It's talking about your wife. It's talking about, you know, people that may be living with you. Everybody's going to die. If you can't get it right as the head of the household, your whole family is going to perish in the tribulation is what it boils down to. Well, let's go on to 17. What, 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 before we do, look what it says right there. Uh, because you have judged that these commands cannot be kept. Because you basically said these commands can't be done. You ended up, you're, you're going to end up costing you know, a lot of people their lives. So it's important you as the head of, head of the household to get this. And if you ain't the head of the household, you should be sharing these commands with the head of the household. If you're a child in the house or if you are a spouse in the house or uh, uh, in 2019, I want to, want to, you know, say we got equal, we're equal or whatever. But let me go ahead and say it. If you are the wife and your husband is out, you know, in in the world carrying on his affairs, you really need to get Hermes in front of him. It's him, is he that's got to get these. You know, he's got to get these. You you're not gonna be able to um, to get yourself and your ha whole family where you need to be while your husband is out doing his own thing your husband really needs to get into Hermes so share it with him you know share it with him you can pop pop our playlist over there um, on there like I said it's rough it's rough you know he, he gonna be quick to click off on just encourage him to stick with it get the lessons out of it or you know he can go over and get the whole book you know and read the book for himself you know but anyway let's go on to verse 18 so I'm jumping ahead let's go to 17 these things he spake very angrily unto me insomuch that he greatly affrighted me for he changed his countenance so that a man could not bear his anger. This is talking about the angel of repentance. This is a serious dude. We hear about this angel of repentance. He ain't no joke. You know, he has a, a huge job to do. His responsibility is f the repentance of all of mankind. You know, he, he is over the repentance of everybody. You know, and he takes that job very seriously. He is a he is a very powerful dude. He is um, very serious about what he what he what he what he does. And here he is telling Hermes, you know, about these commands. And Hermes is like, yeah, you know, them good idea, but I don't know if nobody gonna be able to do it. And this guy gets a little bit upset. And start, what does he say? He affrighted he affrighted Hermes. He scared Hermes when he starts, you know, saying, you know what, if you don't do them, you are gonna die. So Hermes got a little bit scared there. He's verse eighteen. He says, and when he saw 
saw me altogether troubled and confounded, he began to speak more moderately and cheerfully, saying, Oh, foolish and without understanding. So once he realized he had scared Hermans, you know, got him about to, you know, soil his britches or whatever, he starts to, you know, come back and, you know, be a little bit more cheerful with Hermans. Maybe, you know, I guess he's realizing, yeah, I got your attention now, don't I? All right, look at 19. He said, Unconstant. Not knowing the majesty of God, how great and wonderful he is, who created the world for man and has made every creature subject unto him and given him all power that he should be able to fulfill these commands. Yeah. So, you know, here we are. We're the top dogs on this planet. We're not the top dogs in the whole universe. But here on this planet, we have dominion over everything. Shouldn't we have dominion over ourselves as well? And that's what these commands are about us having um, dominion over ourselves by knowing how to act within ourselves. What what um, in comparison, you remember the commandments there in the part of the book of the covenant, which is Exodus chapter 20, starts in Exodus chapter 20 and goes all the way through Exodus chapter 24. That, that is the book of the covenant, which includes the commandments. Those teach us how to how to interact with each other. When it boils down to it, it's how we're supposed to be interacting with each other, how we're supposed to be treating each other. Well, the difference between these commands and mandates over here is they teach us how we're supposed to treat ourselves. You know, how we what we're supposed to do for ourselves. Be cheerful. Don't be angry. Um, and that kind of thing. So there is a little bit of a difference there. But let's go on to 20. He says, He is able, said he, to fulfill all these commands who has the Lord in his heart. But they who have the Lord only on their mouths, their hearts are hardened, and they are far from the Lord. To such persons, these commands are hard and difficult. Talk about the, us individuals who haven't had a chance to get around to figuring out what it is that we believe in. I mean, we believe in the Messiah. We believe in Yehoshua HaMashiach, how he, his blood has been shed for our salvation or whatever. But we haven't gone any further than that. You know what I'm saying? It's like some of us, actually some of us have gone down and heard one church sermon by some good preacher and we believed. But that was the extent of it. We went on back to doing those same things that we've been doing well for those individuals who haven't taken the time to figure out what it is that they believe in taking the time to understand who our father is and what he expects of us these commands are going to be a little bit more difficult for them to do only really because of doubtfulness doubtfulness when it is going to be real easy for doubtfulness to creep in for the person who's not firmly grounded in the word and it's going to make things a little bit more hard for him but let's go on to 21 Therefore, ye that are empty and light in the faith, put on the Lord your God in your hearts, and ye shall perceive how that nothing is more easy than these commands, nor more pleasant, nor more gentle and holy. Okay, yeah, so once we start to learn the Father's ways and what he expects and how important it is for us to, to, to do these things according to his wishes, you know, it, we, we start to get a little bit more motivation. It starts to become easier because it's necessary. We realize we have to do this. Our lives is at stake here, not only our lives, but the lives of our children our grandchildren and you know those going on through the future and just to get off on a little bit of a tangent here I'm going to try to get back as quick as I can but a lot of people believe that the world is about to end I was talking to some guys yesterday who believe that the world is actually about to end here with this tribulation I'm telling you no 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 the world is not about to end you know people are going to be still farming people are still going to be getting married and having babies for the next thousand years this planet is going to be here for another thousand years it's just a lot of individuals are about to go away two thirds of all humanity is about to be annihilated here in this tribulation and the ones specifically are the ones who will not get over their wickedness who will not get over the hate these individuals are you know about to perish but i'm about to run out of power here so let me see if i can run on 22 and turn yourselves to the lord your god and forsake the devil and his pleasures because they are evil and bitter and impure and fear not the devil because he has no power over you yeah he the, the devil he's still in the fifth dimension as of today i'm in and I even say that slowly because if you remember the eschatology, the, the, the plan, the end times plan, the devil is made manifest into a human being. He becomes a person at one point, a person we call the Antichrist or whatever, the, the main dude Antichrist. We ain't talking about all of the little Antichrists in the world. We're talking about the main Antichrist. He, he is actually going to be the devil incarnate, the devil made flesh. As of right now, he's still in the fifth dimension. The same way Adam and Eve was when 
when they were created, he's kind of an angelic figure, meaning if you remember your, your equation there, E equals MC squared, well, because he's an angelic figure, he doesn't have any mass, meaning he doesn't have any power. He can't really do anything. He can't open a door. He can't push you over. He can't really do anything. So he's not to be feared, you know, at all. But what he can do is get in your mind and make you have bad thoughts and make you, you know, have impure, impure thinking. And that that will have a negative effect. So he can affect you, but he doesn't have any power over you. You know, those are just thoughts. If you can learn to to control your thoughts, you can easily defeat him. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. But let's look at verse 23. For I am with you, the messenger of repentance, who have the dominion over him. The devil does indeed affright men, but his terror is vain. Wherefore, fear him not, and he will flee from thee. Now, I, I'm a student just like you guys. The only difference between me and a lot of you guys is when I do my Bible studies, I do them online. I'm actually in a Bible study right now, studying the Word, but I study in a way where other people can participate in my Bible study. I wish some of you guys were around so you could actually participate and jump in and say stuff. That would make it easier. Um, it's kind of hard doing this by myself sometimes, but you know, we push on. But look right here. I just learned this part right here. He says, uh, for I am with you that the messenger of repentance who have the dominion over him. I didn't know uh, I, this first. I never realized that the angel of repentance has the dominion over the devil. He's saying that the that he ha he controls the devil and makes the devil do what he say do. Wow, that's something to think about there. He says the devil does indeed affright men, but his terror is vain. Wherefore, you know, it's a vain terror. It's, he 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 really can't do anything. Like we said, he doesn't really have any real power. He, you know, he's he he just uses you know other stuff to to like principalities and power to harm us or whatever but if we, we can learn to resist those we can learn to resist those uh, let's look at verse 24 and I said unto him sir hear me speak a few words unto you he answered say on a man in these desires to keep the commandments of God and there is no one but what prays unto God that he may be able to keep his commandments but the devil is hard and by his power rules over the servants of God and he said, he cannot rule over the servants of God who trust in him with all their hearts. All right. So now this is what we were just saying. You know, he does have some stuff that he can do. The devil does have tricks. He can he can cause you pain. But for those who put their faith in the father who learn to resist the devil, it's not he, he doesn't have that much power. It's what he's telling us here. Though, what does he say? But the devil is hard and by his power, he rules over the servants of God. And he said he cannot rule over the servants of God who trust in him, who who with all their hearts. So now this is another thing that, that I'm learning here. Oh, just jumping at me for the first time. He doesn't rule over those that love the Lord, that serve the Lord, the servants of the most high. He doesn't he does the Satan doesn't rule over them at all. It's those individuals that's on the outskirts that's a little bit doubtful or or worldly or materialistic or haven't bothered to you know read about the commandments or keep those those people the devil has rule over and he's ruling over them you can see it too all you have to do is talk to him for a few minutes and the devil it seems like the devil is almost running their life sometimes but let's go on to 26 he says the devil may strive but he cannot overcome them Meaning he can mess with them, but he can't overcome them. And he does. He messes with us all the time. He comes in. One of the main things we've been talking about, and this is fresh on my, not my mind because I just finished up the other class. But he comes in and gives us wicked desires and wicked thoughts. But he can't overcome the service of God because one thing we know is that we can control our thoughts. We can make him you know, stop being a, having an effect on our thoughts. Um, let's look at verse 27. He says, for if ye resist him, he will flee away with confusion from you. But they that are not full in the faith fear the devil as if he has some great power. For the devil tries the servants of God, and if he finds them empty, he destroys them. Yeah, so those of us who are empty, those of us that are weak in the faith, those of us who haven't bothered to figure it out what it is that we believe in, haven't bothered to read our scripture, haven't bothered to understand the commandments that we are being held accountable for, those people are weak, and those people end up being destroyed by the devil. That's why we have to be really, really careful. And 
and keep our faith strong so we can resist the devil. And you see a lot of people are being destroyed by him, guys. He's having a way with humanity right now at this point. And, it's, and it only promises to get worse. There is, there is a separation going on right now from the father's people to the devil's people. And the devil, he's going to get the majority of them. He's going to get two-thirds of these, these uh, fleshly bodies. And he's going to take them into, you know, take them to death. He, he wants to kill them. He wants to kill everybody. But, you know, there's going to be one-third of us who are actually going to keep the commandments and be the service of God. We're going to end up surviving. I just pray I'm one of them. But let's go on to 28. For as man... When he fills up vessels with good wine and among them puts a few vessels half full and comes to try and taste of the vessels, does not try those that are full because he knows that they are good, but taste those that are half full, lest they should grow sour. For vessels half full soon grow sour and lose the taste of wine. So the devil comes to the servants of God to try them. All right. So now this is talking about us individuals who maybe we only, you know, read a little bit. We're half full. We're not completely empty but we're only half full but even these even even these guys will become will become sour we have to understand what does the bible say read to show yourself approved we have to read his word we have to read his word and and know what it is that's in there we ha i want to say we have to read it all we have to we have to really read everything that's in there we can't be like those psalms 23 guys that think we can just read psalms 23 once a week and everything's fine we have to read all of them books isaiah habakkuk uh, you know know Jonah books that we some books we never even heard of Micah we have to read all of those books they all have good information in Titus and all of those books let's go on to 29 they that are full of the faith resist him stoutly and he departs from them because he finds no place where to enter into them then he goes to those that are not full of faith and because he has a place of interest he goes into them and does what he will with them and they become his servants yeah, talking about the guys who are half full, talking about the guys who 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 aren't really, you know, um, grounded in the word as they should be. And you see this going on, guys. You know, you see this going on. You know, there's a lot of people getting tricked up by Satan right now. And like I said, it's only getting worse and it's going to get really worse until a lot of people are going to die. Let's look at verse 30. I, I'm having power issues. I'm trying to erase this thing before it goes blank on me. But let's go. 30 he says, but I, the messenger of. Okay, so I finally ran out of power, had to move to another location. Uh, so this may sound a little bit disjointed, but let's go ahead. Let's go to verse 30. He says, but I, the messenger of repentance, say unto you, fear not the devil, for I am sent unto you that I may be with you. And as many as shall repent with your whole heart and that I may confirm you in the faith. See, now the shepherd of uh, the angel of repentance, he is our helper. He is the one who not only is he responsible for us gaining repentance, but once we have repented, he is the one that will help us stay in there. He's, he's going to be that angelic figure. Remember that he is over. We just learned a few minutes ago that he is over Satan. We learned in the uh, New Testament that we fight against principalities and powers, not against flesh and blood. So it is this, this shepherd, this uh, angel of repentance that is going. And I keep calling him a shepherd because he is a shepherd. You know, that's what that's what we call it the shepherd of Hermas because the angel of repentance is a shepherd and is kind of helping Hermas along and he's going to be the one that's going to protect Hermas from some of this evil stuff that goes on all Hermas really has to do and all we really have to do is repent with our whole heart want to be away from that stuff and we'll get a little bit of help if we don't we're going to get a help you're going to get help in the opposite direction too but let's go on to verse 31 he says believe therefore ye who by reason of your transgressions have forgot God and your own salvation and adding to your sins have made your life very heavy. Talking about the individuals who 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 had like I said have forgotten God. So you gotta understand what really is going on here in 2019 as far as the faith is concerned. There's a lot of people you see 
who are claiming to to be Christians or claiming to be this and claiming to be that, but they look a lot like atheists. They're denying the word. They aren't keeping the commandments. They're rebellious. They aren't doing anything they were supposed to be doing. Well, the thing about it, the atheists and the rebellious Christians, the rebellious believers are all in the same boat. And that boat is the boat that we don't want anybody telling us what to do. We want to be able to do what we want to do. And we don't want anybody, including the Father in heaven, interfering with what it is that we want to do. And so that's what he's talking talking about here when he says ye who by reason of your transgressions have forgotten God meaning they rather have the transgressions than having the father they would rather have those those wicked desires than have anything to do with the creator he says and your own salvation which is basically what they put in jeopardy by doing so because life belongs to those that keep the commandments and adding to your sins have made their life very heavy. That's what ends up happening. Is to end up, you know, with with a hard life. It's really hard to leave live outside of the commandments, you know. And you know that's what they're feeling, especially for those who want to be in the middle, want to want to call on the name of the Lord, but you know, they want to do all of the devilish stuff. Life gets really hard for those guys. Well, let's go on to verse 32. That if ye shall turn to the Lord with your whole hearts and shall serve him according to his will, he will heal you of your former sins and ye shall have dominion over all of the works of the devil. Yes, yeah, talking about don't don't be so much worried about the bad person that you've been in the past. Like we said, this book, The Shepherd of Hermes, should have been taught in our churches the whole time and it has not been. So we're, it's not all of our fault. We never was taught this stuff. And so now we look and we say, well, I've always been a angry person I know I have personally I always been an angry person I always been a doubtful person I always you know never really been a cheerful person it, 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 you know well when we when we realize what's going on and we become repentant of this now what does it say it's, um uh, he talking about the father in heaven will heal us of those former sins, which means I ain't got to go back and correct the anger that I used to have. Or I don't have to worry about, you know, those days when I was sad and I grieved the Holy Spirit. All I got to do is stop doing it now and everything is going to be all right. Let's look at verse 33. He says, be not then afraid of the least of these threatenings, for they are without force as the nerves of a dead man. But hearken unto me and fear the Lord Almighty who is able to save and to destroy you and keep his commands that ye may live unto God. All right? You don't worry about those principalities and powers. We talked about that a few minutes ago. How, you know, these are fifth dimensional creatures. They don't really have the, the uh, mechanical force, the material force to actually do something. If he did, I'm going to tell you now, if, the, if Satan had a body, which you're going to get it in a little while, you know, sometime halfway through the tribulation or whatever, he's actually going to get a physical body and watch what he does with it he's going to try to destroy the whole planet and everybody living on it including all animals and bugs and everything he's going to try to kill everything on the planet how is he going to do that what weapons are he's going to use he's going to use hate he's going to use you know uh greed he's going to use he's going to be some type of worldly figure that's going to be able to come on television or whatever that's what they mean by the image of the beast he's going to be on television and he's going to be making people hateful making people kill each other making people do horrible things to each other that's going to in turn cause the earth to rise up and to harm us you got to remember that's why the flood occurred in the first place it wasn't the father that created the flood They're talking about noah's flood it was man that created the flood you had these these uh, individuals that was doing a whole bunch of horrible things it's talking about the fallen angels and their sons and nephilim and all kinds of stuff was going on it was the flood that came through and annihilated these people and got them off the planet but let me go on like i said I got some power now, so I'm adding more to this than I was. But let me go on to 34. And I said unto him, Sir, I am now confirmed in all of the commands of the Lord whilst you are with me. And I know that you will break all of the powers of the devil. Yeah, this is Herman saying, as long as you're with me, man, I'll be able to handle all of this stuff. You know, you ain't going nowhere, are you? You know, because this stuff is kind of hard. You know, as long as you're going to be with me, I'll be able to do anything. Uh, you are my shepherd. Look at verse 35. He says, and we also shall overcome him if we shall be able through the help of the Lord to keep these commands which you have delivered yeah so we're basically saying that we need help to keep these commands and we do 
I keep going back to these principalities and powers, guys. These ha these guys are supernatural. They can get in our minds. They can get in our friends' minds. They can get in our neighbors. They can get in our families and have our families doing stuff to us, you know, have our families hating on us. And in turn, we want to hate back on them kind of thing. Well, once we become repentant and get in line with what the shepherd of Hermes is, is saying and get in line with the commandments of the, the of Moses and, and, you know, the commandments of the uh, Messiah there on the Sermon on the Mount, then we start to have we start to get help in order to complete these commandments and stay away from these bad guys kind of thing let's go on to 36 uh, looks like the last verse he says thou shalt keep them said he if thou shalt purify thy heart toward the Lord and all they also shall keep them who shall cleanse their hearts from the vain desires of the present world and shall live unto God and that's what it's about guys we have to get away from this present world all of our institutions our hospitals our churches our schools our courthouses all of these people have uh, have taught us the opposite of what the father wants to teach us all of these institutions I named four of them these ins if you look at them individually they're all teaching us how to live without the father our schools are teaching us how to live without the father you know they, they're telling us to you know be ambitious and you know uh, how to succeed and all of this stuff um, and even how you know depends on what school you go to they tell you how to grow stuff without you know with fertilizer and, and you know uh, and chemicals and all of that you don't have to depend on the father to grow anything you can go down there and get you a big bag of 10 10 10 and make anything pop up out of the ground you don't really need him that's our schools our hospitals are telling us we don't need the father and all of his healing herbs that he's put out here for us he's telling us that we can go down to the doctors and get some pills to take care of everything we want our courthouses are telling us that they are they they provide the law for us we don't have to go back into the old we don't have to go back into the old testament and look at those levitical laws and those um those mosaic laws and all of that we we can just depend on man's laws and such and i forgot the other Oh, and the churches, the churches too. The churches are probably the main ones. The churches are the ones that is rounding them off because they're telling us that we don't have to keep the commandments at all. That those commandments are antiquated and old and was for somebody else. They was for the Jews a long time ago. And we don't have to worry about all of that stuff. So, so all of these institutions, are, all of these worldly institutions are steering us away from the Father. And we, those who want to be in line with him, have to work really hard in order to get back away from these worldly ideas and get back into what he has us to do. And that's the Holy Scripture. All right, y'all. That look like it's going to wrap it up for the commands. I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around with us and, and hearing out these commands. Go ahead and leave some comments. Um, like I said, look, look for the playlist that's about to pop up on your, um, on your end screen. There's going to be a link there that's going to point to the um, uh, playlist that has all of these commands in it. And it's gonna, I'll probably put up the playlist for the similar tools that we've done too. Go ahead and hit the uh, bell button on your um, subscription there. Go ahead and hit the subscription button if you haven't done so, so that you can get these classes we're putting up. Because we're gonna end up doing these classes again. Like I said, those are the, those are the ones that are pretty rough. And you know, so I, I wanna go ahead and do them again. So make sure you subscribe so you can get those classes when they come out. All right, y'all, love you. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtues.